Fran Fondo, a partner with Goodwin Proctor, a um, former federal prosecutor. Got into this space, uh, I think, in part due to that background a couple of years ago. Um, I also head up our uh, law, our digital currency blog, and our digital currency blockchain group. Thank you. Uh, my name's Ruben Brahmanen. I'm a product counsel at Coinbase. That means um, I'm responsible for all the decisions we make about the assets we list and the business that we uh, do in different countries. Um, and Coinbase's space, that involvement in, in this space is largely as the, the piece of infrastructure that is in the exchange, the bridge between fiat and the crypto world. And so we follow this space very closely. Hi, my name's Galia Benarti. I'm the co-founder of Bancor. Um, Bancor is creating a standard for intrinsically tradable tokens, so tokens that won't need to be traded on an exchange. Uh, one day, exchangeability is essentially baked into the smart contract of these tokens. I'm presenting later in the, in the pitch competition, but I'll just say that uh, I'm not a lawyer, and nothing that I say here should be construed as legal advice. Um, we are basically on the panel to represent the startup. Uh, aspect, we're heading towards an ICO in late May, um, and so to share a little bit about what our experience has been gearing up for this process. Hi, I'm Ryan Strauss. I'm an attorney at the Seattle office of Denmark and West, and I work with uh, companies developing new financial products and services. Well, as you probably heard in the last presentation, I rambled on a little bit with my sort of rough vision views of the SEC, and I think uh, maybe I was a little bit hard, but uh, you know, I understand, I was having a chat earlier with Ryan, and I kind of want to hand this back to you, Ryan, in, uh, in a sense. Um, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, a ruling yesterday, I believe, um, with the, uh, ah, with the OSS, correct? Oh, uh, that just, I, I, I think Richard's OCC, OCC. OCC. So, some background, if anybody knows who the OCC is, don't be ashamed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, so the OCC is the opposite of the controller of the currency. Can everybody hear me in the back? Hold it closer. All right, fair enough. All right, so, uh, the, and the OCC is the chartering authority for, for national banks. So there's state charters and there's na state chartered and national chartered banks. The OCC came out uh, recently with a proposal to start granting limited purpose fintech chart bank charts. Um, and what Richard's referring to is, is the states, uh, the or organization called the Conference of State Banking Supervisors, which is comprised of all of the, the various state chartering authorities, um, recently filed a complaint challenging the OCC's authority to issue these fintech charters. Um, yeah. So what, is the, what are the implications of that, though? We don't know. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it happened yesterday. So, um, but but you talk about decentralization of some of the regulatory potentially. Well, so historically we've had a dual chartered banking system. So you can get a state charter, or you can get a federal charter. Okay. And and that is for traditional banks, for non-depository banks or non-depository financial institutions. Uh, these uh, you hear these. There's a variety of types of non-depository financial, financial institutions. The ones most relevant in this space, probably, I would say, it, um, would be the money transmitter. Uh, they are licensed by the states. Uh, there's also a registration process at the federal level, but the licensing, licensing authority is at the state level. So this is, in a lot of ways, the, is a federal, uh, is an attempt to, to balance that, to mirror, by the OCC, to balance that, to mirror the traditional dual charter system. Um, that being said, there is no limited purpose state charter. So it's, it's, it's a complicated, really in the weeds conversation. That, okay, um, I won't push you too far. Yeah, you're, you're being telling, you're being filmed, so. Um, yeah, I mean, Gallia, what about the regulatory challenges for Bancor? I mean, have you guys, it's funny because I was sitting with your brother on stage in Tel Aviv recently and uh, he was really impassioned. It was amazing because he stood up and he pointed out to this huge crowd in Tel Aviv and he says, we're leaving. <laughs> uh, basically, interestingly enough, Israel uh, recently decided to put VAT charges on Bitcoin <laughs> on every transaction and it's, uh, I don't think it's made the community very happy 
Uh, and, you know, certainly, obviously, maybe not, maybe not obviously, but it, I, it, it's, it's not sure, you're not going to go and sell in Tel Aviv for sure, I would assume. Yeah, so um, we're based in Tel Aviv. Um, Israel traditionally tracks America in terms of regulation, and so that's the direction that they're going um, in this topic as well. And essentially what that's causing is the same thing that you're seeing in America, which is that blockchain teams are leaving, uh, or at least legally leaving, um, to establish their entities elsewhere. So we're doing the, the route that many uh, startups are doing, which is we're a Swiss-based uh, nonprofit. Actually, we're on the protocol level, so it's easier for us to justify a nonprofit um, rather than an application token, which is slightly different. Um, but we're setting up in Switzerland as a nonprofit. The nonprofit, or the, the Swiss entity is issuing our token. Um, and, and that's what's happening in the, in the Israeli ecosystem. So you know, when we look at uh, America and Israel, we basically see a lot of lost opportunity um, for these jurisdictions to keep teams in-house and to kind of lead, which is what Switzerland and Singapore, as we've heard today, are doing. Okay, interesting. So you guys are actually creating your own coin then. You're not going to base it on Ethereum. You're going to create a native cryptocurrency? Or? We are in the ERC-20 token. Oh, you're in the ERC-20. Okay, great. Um, well, let's move it on now. Coinbase, regulatory issues. How's it been going for you? I mean, do you have any comments on... on uh... Yeah, I got, I got plenty, plenty yeah, of mail for it. <laughs> um, I think... Uh, Based on your last, uh, the, the last session, which I think there were some interesting issues that arose, especially around ICOs. Um, and I don't know if anyone will talk about that right now, but that, I think that is more interesting um, than specifically anything to do with, with Coinbase. But we have, we have the same sort of issues that, that Ryan was alluding to, right? We have state money transmitter licenses, which don't necessarily make the most sense for us, but that's just the closest thing to, to a regulatory structure that, that exists. And if there was a federal structure, that would solve our problems in the US, but again, there would be um, similar problems in, in the UK and the EU and everywhere else we operate. So I, I think there's, like, we can talk endlessly about these structures, but um, maybe ICOs are more interesting. Well, I, I was talking to Ryan earlier about ICOs, and rather than rewriting the regulatory structure, it was Ryan's opinion that we need to make these things fit within what exists, within the language that exists. And I've heard something about Huey's law, or, you know, they can basically label anything a, uh, uh, you know, a, a security. Uh, it's very broad. It's hard to define what it is. We saw the big losses got their butts kicked to the curb again. You know, um, so when you talked about fitting in, um, it, that you believe that the legislation is, is flexible enough to to create a framework within the existing regulatory system to make this possible. That's addressing me. Yeah. Okay. So what I was what I was what Rich is alluding to is that um, you know, there are many states that have, and, and New York being one of them, that have come out with blockchain-specific laws. And, and that's fine, that's one way to approach it, but finding your, and this is what Ruben was alluding to as well, finding a, an existing regulatory structure where you can, where you can fit in, or an existing uh, um, legal structure where you can fit in um, is is much is usually the more effective route than than trying to reinvent the wheel with a new regulatory structure. Um, and there's a number of opportunities depending on how. I'm not the guy to talk about the the how we test uh, this. Um, I'm sure Grant can. Um, but uh, but yeah, what I was talking about is block is technology specific laws versus. Um, um, agnostic laws and and finding ways to find appropriate regula regulatory structures that exist rather than reinventing them. Grant, love to hear your take on this. Yeah, so so it's the Howey test, it's a three point test, and um, but it's, and it's a, but it's like a fifty year old case, right? And so you're applying very modern technology, new ideas to a fifty year old test. And what you're seeing, which is, you know, I have clients come to us and they say, well, we don't fit it because of the following reason. And to some extent, it doesn't matter what you think, it matters what the SEC thinks. And the SEC is looking at it. And they're, you know, um, and as more and more money is raised, and particularly if people start getting defrauded, I mean, that's always like, how many, you know, targets can you put on your back? You start defrauding people, that adds it, digital currency, whether 
it's Ether or uh, Bitcoin, different targets, right? Raising money from consumers, that's a target. When you start having people complain about it, the SEC will figure out a way to start regulating it or enforcing it. And the problem is, is that most of these companies, I mean, it's amazing. The SEC will target and identify companies that are moving a couple thousand dollars. That's it. And if they see you're doing something wrong with equity securities, then they will come in. And so, now not every company, but it's, but, but it's, not, it's not one of these things we're too small to be noticed. And I think ICOs are not too small. They are raising a lot of money. I mean, I do think they have some issues. They do have to deal with the Howard test. And, um, and companies are being creative about getting around it. Um, but, but I also always apply kind of a look, does it look like a security? Does it smell like a security? And in some ways, I think that's more of a test than when you go down the rigid analysis. 